All right, number 216 is called Staff God, and this is from Rarot Rarotonga, which is the largest of the Cook Islands, which is located in Polynesia, late 18th to 19th century, and the materials are wood, tapa, which means bark cloth, fiber, and feathers. All right, so what we're looking at here, College Board gives us these two images. So the image on the right is just zoomed in or closer up vision of what we're seeing here. And then on the left, you can see it with all the tapa, that's the bark cloth. I'd also write down the size of these. So 23 inches for the little wooden carved part. And then it's wooded and carved underneath, but it's all wrapped with the bark cloth. So you can't see underneath, but the that piece then is 13 feet. All right, so you wanted to show the picture of Cook Islands, tiny islands named Cook Island, Cook Islands because of Captain Cook landing on that island. All right, so comparing this to the Po mask from Africa, what similarities are we seeing here? What are some of the visual characteristics? So definitely similarity in the facial features like the eyes and the mouth. Um, they're, you know, there's an indication of a nose on the staff god, but it's very minimal, right? And there's a very small dainty nose on the Po mask. So smooth head with large stylized eyes. You could describe them as almond shaped. And then the mouth on the staff god was described as closed tightly. It's kind of hard, you know, to tell. It's very stylized, but also the Po mask has a um, closed mouth and then pointed chin for the staff god. Overall, you need to be able to recognize that the head is the largest part. The head is the largest part or the feature of the carved wooden part of the staff. So in other artworks, it talks about the head being the seat of wisdom, so therefore it's emphasized. All right, here's kind of a zoomed in closer up version here. So the smaller figure figures act as vertebrae, and then it's alternating, it could be alternating males and females. The males seen in profile, and this would be a phallus here and then here. And then the females have been described as in a childbirth pose. And then the, I would describe them as stylized, almost abstracted, really hard to tell what we're looking at. So very stylized. And they've been described as depicting ancestors. And then also, so we can see the head, right? The head is very large. And then the head connects to an arm and then the arm connects to a little hand down here. So I would draw that on your notes. All right, so it is believed that this is depicting, it's definitely depicting a God. Most people say that it depicts the God of fertility who's also the creation God. So here's another sculpture of that same God. So you can definitely see some similarities between the two. His name is Tangora. Um, we're, for content, this is also showing the artistic roles of men and women. Um, we talked about this with the Hiapo Tapa in the Pacific Art Unit, but think about the contemporary art unit. Which artwork comments on gender roles in the arts? And then also the materials. I thought of Faith Ringgold, right, where they're dancing in the Louvre. She has that whole series that's talking about um, placing women into roles in the art world where they haven't been there before, especially African-Americans. And she's also working with fibers, which is a soft material. So in the Pacific arts, men carved hard materials such as wood, and then women worked with soft materials such as the tapa, which means bark cloth, any sort of fibers or soft materials. All right, and then we have a picture of women working on it, but there are conservationists working at the British Museum. This is a great photo for scale though. The function of the bark cloth, it's all of these layers of that tapa that's wrapped around that staff god. So there's a wooden staff god inside. We're just kind of seeing the top with the head and the arm and the little vertebrae. On the bottom, you kind of have something sticking out here. It's believed there would have been another phallus coming out there. We'll talk about why it's not there anymore. But the function of the bark cloth, this provided the deity with clothing. It protects and contains the deity's mana. Remember, that's that inner force, that power that comes from the gods. Without the wrapping, the staff loses its power and becomes useless. And then also containing the mana, that power protects other people from that mana. 
So the bark cloth is really important. All right, what happens? So context and function. So the people from this island believed that Tangor was the first god who then created a family of gods. So then this was made, the function is to honor that god. This would have been displayed and worshiped in outdoor courtyards. And then we've got missionaries arriving in 1827. So when missionaries arrive to these islands, all of the islands in the Pacific, they then convert the native people to Christianity. That's just my summarized word for Christianity. So here's everybody gathering. So to show their conversion, the people gathered with their staff gods, and you can see them all lying on the ground here, and then they had them burned. Missionaries took some of them back, the ones that weren't burned, to London to show the idolatry that they have defeated. You can see on the bottom of this drawing or print and the idols he shall utterly abolish um, most had phalluses that were then broken off because they were viewed as indecent they also removed the bark cloth or the tapa believing that that was insignificant the real sculpture is that wooden staff part inside so the hours from the 250 this is the only surviving example that has the bark cloth Ding, there it is, the whole thing in its glory. Boom, done. 